to provide military weapons for Ukraine is the most important vote we will ever take as United States senators. We're not being asked to send American troops into war. We are asked to help the Ukrainians defend themselves. If we fail to help Ukraine, Putin will invade a NATO nation. He may delay his next invasion until he rebuilds his decimated military. But we must be clear-eyed. Ukraine is not the end. It is a step. If we fail to help Ukraine, China will eventually absorb Taiwan. If we fail to help Ukraine, we will abandon our word and our commitment, providing to our friends a view that America cannot be trusted. The Chinese Communist Party is already spreading pop propaganda using our delay as a warning to Taiwan that the United States will not be there to help in the face of China's threat. If we fail to help Ukraine, NATO, the alliance that's prevented great power conflict for over 75 years, will falter and eventually disintegrate. If we fail to help Ukraine, America will cease to be the arsenal of democracy. It will cease to be the leader of the free world. We will be replaced by the authoritarians, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. If we fail to help the U Ukraine, we will be known not as our fathers and mothers were, the greatest generation, but as the worst generation. Now, for months, I've listened to the arguments for denying help to the Ukrainian people. I've observed that the reasons have evolved over time. First, it was claimed that Europe was not paying their fair share. That was proven incorrect. Our allies have already co contributed more than $96 billion in aid, and the EU earlier this month agreed to provide $54 billion more over the next four years. Next, it was argued that we should instead focus on the Pacific and Taiwan. But Taiwan and Japan and South Korea tell us that the single best thing we can do to dissuade China's aggression is to support Ukraine. Next, we were told that we couldn't afford $60 billion for Ukraine-related funding. But somehow, we can afford an $850 billion annual defense budget and annual trillion-dollar deficits, which has happened under both former President Trump and President Biden. Next, it was claimed that we would have insufficient weapons to defend America and Israel if we send more weapons to Ukraine. But the Department of Defense has explained that helping Ukraine will actually strengthen our national security by helping to rebuild our depleted military industrial base. The latest excuse for denying aid to Ukraine is that this bill is a clever disguise to set up an impeachment of Donald Trump at some point in the future. Under this so-called logic, Trump has to be elected, Democrats have to win the House, and those Democrats have to be unable to find any other indiscretion of Donald Trump's upon which to base an impeachment. Now, I know that the shock jocks and online instigators have effectively riled up many in the far reaches of my party. But if your position is being cheered by Vladimir Putin, it's time to reconsider your position. Now, I can't see into the future, but there are no guarantees that Ukraine will defeat Russia but that does not mean that we should stand back and let Putin have his way with Europe. What sending weapons to Ukraine does do is help discourage further Russian and Chinese invasions, which could draw us in. It helps preserve NATO. It allows America to remain the leader of the free world. And it shows that we honor our word to our friends and allies. Lekwalesa the first democratically elected president of Poland since 1926, and someone I've been fortunate enough to meet with, recently wrote to all the United States senators. He said this, quote, you're obliged to assure a peaceful future for your children. Our grandchildren will never forgive us if we fail to stop Russia now. If the U.S. does not lead, nobody will, end of quote. Couldn't agree more. Helping a free people defend their freedom is simply the right thing to do. Thank you, Madam President.
Madam President.